so I recently had the chance to read uh, David J. Chalmers' book, uh, Reality Plus, Virtual Worlds and the Problems of Philosophy. And uh, I enjoyed it a lot. It was a really good read. Um, I think the thing I probably appreciate most about it is the fact that it speaks very, very directly to basically all of the questions I had about the simulation hypothesis previously, because that is what a lot of the book is about. It's a lot of it is about the hypo the, the simulation hypothesis. And, you know, he kind of also talks about re virtual reality kind of through that, but a lot of it ends up being about the, the simulation hypothesis and simulations and like the technology of that, but also like the physics of it and the metaphysics and like the, the, the philosophical problems. And yeah, like, you know, cause I've, you know, I haven't read up on the simulation hypothesis extensively but i've been aware of it for a long time now i've thought about it a lot and discussed it a lot and so you know a lot of the questions i had always sort of wondered about were things like um okay are we actually going to be allowed to make simulations that are anything like us you know like ethically are we going to be allowed to do that because when you think about like just how much how many rules and regulations there are around you know, experimenting on humans and, you know, science and in like uh, psychology when, you know, you consider the fact that you have to sign like a waiver just to, you know, be part of an experiment where you play whack-a-mole for half an hour with an eye tracker on. Um, are we really just going to let ourselves like make, you know, humans that can like feel pain and distress and like misery and all that just to like be able to run simulations on them is that really a thing we're gonna like let ourselves do um and that was something i always wondered about and the other thing is you know okay like so we can upload a brain into a computer i guess at some point in in the future but like the simulations we're gonna make are they actually going to be made of like the things that we're made of like are we actually gonna make like people that are made out of like skin and bones and blood really like is that what the simulation is going to be and if not then it's like okay well i'm made of that and that kind of makes me think i'm not a simulation so you know the book speaks very directly to both of those things along with a lot of other things that i'd always kind of wondered about so it's kind of like I guess my questions and concerns just aren't that atypical, <laughs> but it's still really satisfying and interesting to see him like discuss all of that kind of stuff really in depth like that. Um, something he does throughout the book that I really liked is in a way that's like very concise, but still like pretty elaborate and helpful. He really goes through like all the philosophy stuff he's talking about kind of like giving you like a brief just sort of introduction so that if you've never taken like a philosophy course at any point in your life you'd still have a pretty good sense of like what the philosophical problems are that he's talking about with respect to these things and that's kind of the thing he does just at the beginning of like all the different chapters and you know, if you're already familiar with the philosophy stuff, then it's just kind of a really sort of brisk um, kind of review of that kind of thing. Um, it doesn't really feel like it weighs the book down very much. Um, yeah, but I definitely learned a few things just kind of about philosophy, not even pertaining to like the virtual reality and simulation stuff, but just like basic philosophy stuff I learned that I thought was really interesting. Um, Another thing I thought I really liked, um, this is kind of the, the smaller thing, but like the sixth chapter is like, what is reality? And I kind of appreciated that one a lot just because like when we think about like most people when they talk about reality or whether something's real, they kind of think they know what they're talking about, but it's actually kind of complicated. There's actually, a, 
quite a few different things when we can mean when we talk about whether something's real and he kind of like breaks that down and like runs through all of them in a way that I really sort of enjoyed, uh, you know, kind of in service of, you know, his argument that virtual reality is in fact real. Um, but I appreciate him including that bit of like scaffolding in it. Um, it's a pretty hefty book but the chapters are pretty short and the illustrations are really cool. Um, really liked the illustrations and the chapters get into a lot of different things. Um, one of them is called, you know, is God a hacker in the next universe up, which I thought was a pretty amusing chapter title. Um, you know, they get into things like, does virtual reality lead to alternative facts? Um, and questions like, okay, like if we're spending a lot of time in a virtual world, what about this world where our physical body is still are? Is it going to be a problem, but we're neglecting those? What should we do about that? And I think most interesting to me to kind of go back to one of the things I sort of opened with is like, what are the ethics of bringing simulations into the world? You know, if we can, if, you know, simulated beings are like real lives that really can feel pain, you know, um, is there philosophical justification in, you know, creating a universe of that? Um, And yeah, you know, not to give too much away, but it, it does become complicated because there's, you know, in that chapter, he kind of goes through like, you know, ethics and kind of gives his basic explanation of, you know, the differences between like deontology and utilitarianism and like, you know, virtue ethics and rule utilitarianism and all that good stuff. But then it kind of comes into bear on the question of like, um, can we justify, you know, making a simulation? And that quickly becomes complicated because, you know, it's pretty easy to argue against, you know, bringing a universe of uh, unmitigated misery into existence. Um, but it's comparatively easy to justify, you know, bringing a happy, you know, prosperous world into existence, one that's like, happier, more peaceful, more prosperous than this one. Okay, but what about all the different, you know, in-between scenarios? You know, what about the fact that if we're creating a simulated world, it might be because we don't know what will happen in it, and that's what we're trying to figure out. And so it gets really interesting, you know, really quickly when you start talking about that kind of stuff. So, yeah, um, really enjoyable book, really enjoyed it, and recommend it a lot.